also a very warm welcome from my side. My name is Sebastian. I'm the co-founder of Crucial. We stand for blockchain security without the bullshit. And my duty today is to introduce you guys to one of the most interesting hacks in all blockchain history. In fact, we're not just covering one hack, but actually two, namely the parity wallet hacks. To understand how the parity wallet hacks worked and how you can protect yourself against these types of attacks, we got to understand a little bit how Ethereum works and in fact how the, progr uh, how the programming language Solidity works. So I would say first things first, I'm going to cover uh, the first parity wallet hack um, now and then we discuss the second one and then you can learn uh, in the workshop how to protect yourself against these type of hacks. So, to understand the first parity wall attack, we have to understand an underlying concept of solidity, namely that solidity functions have two types of visibilities. They are either private functions or public functions. And if you don't declare them as private, they're automatically public. If we take this code, for example, and look at it, we clearly see what the issue here is, namely that uh, it was just forgotten to declare the parity wallet as uh, uh, it was just forgotten to declare the parity wallet as private. So the red line should have been declared as internal. It was not done. So the whole wallet was public. And in fact, uh, parity got hacked by a very simple two step attack. First of all, the hacker ran the init wallet um, function, basically saying to the contract, you belong to me. And then he transferred the funds to uh, somewhere else. The damage was around 32 million US dollars. Is that impressive? I don't think so. Um, for those who have been here last time, you know that uh, this could have been done in a much more evil way. Uh, in fact, the hacker could have written a smart contract exploiting uh, this wallet and steal even more. And the fact that he did it in a manual way was the reason why uh, his attack was noticed by a group, so-called uh, White Hat Hacking Group. And um, they noticed what he was doing and then they tried to steal as much as they can, not for the stealing's sake, but for the saving's sake. They were trying to save parity from disaster and um, stole the funds from the wallet with the exact same exploit, um, but they plan to return it and actually did. So you may ask yourself, how could this, uh, how this could have been missed? Um, and in fact, rightfully so. Uh, you may even go so far and ask yourself, does Parity even know how to code Solidity? Yes, they do. In fact, the f uh, the one of the co-founders of Parity, um, Gavin Wood, he's the inventor of Solidity. And this is exactly the reason why you should always uh, have your stuff checked by a third party, uh, which makes sure that these types of uh, mistakes doesn't get overlooked and then get exploited. Now I'm going to cover the second Parity wallet hack. Um, for the second Parity uh, wallet hack, this is a little bit more complex. So uh, we should first of all understand what a wallet is. Um, so a wallet stores funds uh, just like a normal user account would do, but uh, it's also logic and fancy functions added to it. And uh, these type of fancy functions or features uh, could be something like spending limits or multi-sig withdrawals. And uh, the multi-sigs uh, I'm gonna cover a little further because this is very important that you understand it to understand how the second uh, parity hack was done. Okay, so what is a multi-sig withdrawal? Mm, you basically um, take three people and uh, tell your program, hey, at least two people need to sign this function, otherwise it can't execute. And this could be used for two-factor or multi-factor authentication, in fact, um, especially important if you build a metaverse project. Um, now we're going to look at what has gone wrong. And in fact, if we look at this code, I'm trying to uh, dissect it a little further so uh, you understand it um, in a better way. 
So first of all, there is an init function um, called to set up a new wallet. And then we have the kill function mechanism, which um, basically self-destructs um, the project. What has gone wrong? You have to understand every parity wallet deployed since July 2017 uh, was reliant to this and had this vulnerability um, as a library contract. First of all, uh, you have to understand what a library contract is. Many of you um, might not be familiar with library contracts. Um, so first of all, uh, a library contract is basically just a, smart, a normal smart contract, but deployed in a very uh, different way uh, to achieve better gas management. So um, normally, you let's say you have an, uh, we, we do an example here. Let's say you have an awesome library with dozens and dozens of cool functions and you want to share this with the world. So you put it on your GitHub. Others can then download it, um, implement it in their code and then deploy it uh, in Ethereum. This would be um, doable. The issue with that is this is not really scalable because uh, this approach would be very gas intensive. Um, you have to understand um, the more EVM bytecode uh, this contract has to deploy, the more gas is needed um, to deploy it. So um, this gas would have to be paid by everyone using your code. And uh, Parity chose against this design and they uh, used a library contract. And in contrary, a library contract, um, you would deploy it in a way where you say, okay, you have Ethereum, you have um, uh, others can invoke your library um, from their own contracts without paying the gas fee every time because you already deployed it. And um, there's just one small uh, problem in this is uh, every project would become dependent on uh, your, libraries, uh, your library code's instance. And you basically build a huge single point of failure. And according to Murphy's law, everything that uh, could go wrong will go wrong at some point. Shit really hit the fan this time. Um, a guy named DevOps199 um, posted, I accidentally killed it. So what happened? About 500,000 uh, ETH were locked away forever. And uh, this is about uh, 1 billion US dollar as we speak. And to dissect a little further what exactly happened, um, and if he's right, and that was really an accident, um, we have to understand how this was done. And if this was an accident or not, you can judge for yourself. Uh, I'm gonna run you through how this was done now. So step one. Mm. In step one, he uh, first invoked the init function, setting his own address as the owner, which is already like really sketchy. And this basically turned the library contract into a wallet. And then in step two, the attacker called the kill function to destroy uh, the library contract. This has had the, uh, the, the consequence that uh, all projects which were dependent on this library um, were basically useless and all the funds were frozen. And if we think about what we can learn from this is uh, to really, really think our infrastructure th uh, through and our logic. Like this is a total normal uh, way um, to build stuff, but Parity could have prevented this if they would have just initialized uh, the library contract before the malicious actor could do this. Mm, now I'm giving it back to six. Have fun hacking and bye bye.